Howdy folks, it's your friend Fishing with Dom, and I am here to share with you today how to tie and rig your own nightcrawler harness. Now these work very good for all species, and these are especially used in the Great Lakes region when targeting walleye. Now I'm going to make a shorter one because I like to vertical drift these a lot in the St. Clair River, and let's get started, shall we? First off, let's look at the components we need. Starting out, we're going to need a small barrel swivel approximately a size 6 or size 8 or even larger if you want want to than that we need hooks my hook of choice for a nightcrawler harness is a plain old octopus hook I rock the size 2 and the size 4 it works just fine for me now I'm only going to be fishing two hooks on this harness in particular sometimes you can do three or you can add a third stinger hook on the tail end of your harness but we're just gonna go with two today it's gonna be a shorter drifting rig it'll all work out just fine you will need your blade of choice now nothing wrong with the chrome regular chrome always does well your clevis a lot of people might not know what this is but this is a tiny metal piece that you thread through your line and have your blade attached to it this allows your blade to rotate around the line functionally and last of all I got them in a little paper bowl here got some beads got these six millimeter yellow beads today we're gonna to do a combination of this amber yellow and chrome now as far as line choices go I prefer to go a little bit thicker on the size of line diameter just in case you net a walleye and the, one of the hooks gets caught in the net and the walleye is thrashing here and there the teeth aren't going to immediately shred through the through the line or in case you hit a pike or a muskie with this so I like to go with the size uh, 17 some people dial it down to the 12 but I will use the 17 pound fluorocarbon for all of my rigging purposes now we start off with the back end you build your crawler harnesses from the hooks up to your barrel swivel now you're going to take your hook and you are going to feed your fluorocarbon line into the hook down like that. From there on out, you're going to take this tag end and you're going to wrap it around the there we go, around the shank of the hook 5 or 6 times, make sure it's make sure it's tight. And then you take your tag end right there and you feed it back through just like that. There you go, you got a nice smell. I'll upload a better video later, so you might be able to see it a little bit better. But there we go. We got a single snell on here right now leading to my octopus hook. That's a start. This is the hardest part to making a crawler harness. And then we'll take our next hook. We'll do the same exact thing. Only this time, we'll go in from the back of the hook when it's lying down like that. And we will pull it all the way down and you will uh, you will place the hook and stop it to how far you want it from the other hook if you want it really close go for it if you want it a little bit farther up if you're fishing a whole worm go for it but I'm gonna fish that happy medium I'd say I'd put two inches between the eyelet of this hook to the base of this hook and I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm just gonna do the same thing and wrap it around a couple of times nice and tight there I wrapped it around six times take the tag in weave it back the way I came and make sure she, she cinches tight and just like that loop it around like that we have two octopus hooks snelled on the line ready for the next part up at the tag end we're going to start, start taking our beads and thread them onto our line. Now beads come in all sizes and shapes. These are perfectly round spear beads. They do come with fl some beads do come with flat sides. Some uh, some crawler harness accessories come with long styrofoam pieces, so it allows the harness to float a little bit. But we're just going to make a plain Jane yellow and chrome crawler harness today. I use the six millimeter beads because the eights are really, really small and they'd take a lot more 
to build a crawler harness, so we're going to make this as easy as possible on me. And I don't think beans, bead size makes a big difference, especially for walleye. Now, let's put one more on here. If I can get it, there we go. And as soon as I get it untangled, this is what our working progress uh, it is. We have our two hooks, snell to the line, and five beads right there. Now, sometimes you'll need five beads or however long you want it to be. I want this to be a relatively short presentation, so I'm just going to take the blade and I will hold it up to the top of the beads I currently have right there. And I only have about a bead or two visible left underneath the blade, and that's exactly what I want. If I want it up a little bit more, go for it, but in this situation, I see how I want it, you know, two blades above where that blade is showing, that'll be just perfect. So, I will take this teeny tiny clevis piece, it's very, very hard to see, let me put it up to the camera like that, and I will take my blade, <coughs> excuse me, and then thread the clevis through the pilot hole of the blade, just like that. And then, I, as I did with the beads, I will thread the line through the clevis and down to the beads. Now you gotta go through two pilot holes on the clevis, so it can be a little tricky at times. There we go, just like just like that. So we have a blade on there ready for action. And on top of that blade, we are going to add our final yellow bead, just like that. And by golly gee whiz, we almost have a crawler harness ready for action. Now, last of all, we'll take our end line right here and our barrel swivel of choice. You don't have to use a barrel swivel. You can loop knot it if you're going to be fishing with a fast snap. But I like to use these little barrel swivels just in case. I just like using them. Just like using them. I don't think there is a reason behind it because if it's going to a clip, it's going to have enough uh, enough action to work out line twists. And I'm just going to tie a simple fisherman's knot to the barrel swivel and put that right through. There we go. Regular fisherman's knot, barrel swivel, line, beads and blades in all of its glory, just like that. Now you can tie these as short as 18 inches, 14 inches, or make them as long as 6 foot long. On Saginaw Bay, uh, we try to keep them really, really long sometimes, get a nice free action of the blades and the and the meat pulling through the water, but when I'm vertical drifting with a bottom bouncer or a snap weight, I'll keep it really, really short to avoid hang-ups and snags and the blades and the hooks just churning the bottom of the soil. But there we go. Uh, just chrome and yellow, red f size 4 Daichi hooks. Daichi hooks. Pardon me there. And they are good to go. This is ready for walleye fishing. Now, if you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know. I'd love to hear some ideas from my viewers. For you, viewers, And if you have any ideas for videos, please let me know. I'd really like to get involved. You've been watching Fishing with Dom. Thank you. Bye-bye.